Tonight we are coming to you from South Carolina, 1775, up in the Cherokees, near Fort Prince George. Well, greetings to those who love 18th century documents and period writing. I'm David Gillespie with Pumpkin Town Primitives. Tonight we will begin to put pen to paper. Uh, this will be a way for you beginners to get started. I make no claims to be a calligrapher. I'm far from it. I carve letters in stone and am fascinated with letters. Uh, my style is an amalgamation of the study of many 18th century documents over the years. For those who've never tried 18th century writing before, I suggest you start with the round hand alphabet from George Bickham from 1733. I'll leave, I'll leave a link in the description below for this uh, particular picture here, uh, which also has the Italian hand as well as the round hand. Uh, I also would recommend that you start to develop your own style using your favorite letters from the period. Um, I'm a big fan of Henry Lawrence of South Carolina from the 1760s. I think he has beautiful flourishes, and his letters are a, a great source of interest for me personally. Uh, to start with, remember you're trying to accomplish many things at one time. It's easiest to achieve large goals and small steps. Hurdle number one is you're trying to learn the alphabet. Hurdle number two you're trying to learn the use of the quill pen. I don't recommend trying to do both at the same time. If we can attack the alphabet first, we can then get the strokes down and then graduate up to the use of the quill pen secondly. That's how I did it. There's no right or wrong way with these things, but that's what I recommend. Why don't we start out tonight with uh, a piece of paper this is our paper that we sell on our online store, and I'll leave a link below. There's a smooth side and a rough side. You don't have to use the paper to start out practicing, by the way. I'm just showing this uh, for later. And I also have these slanted uh, lines that I put underneath. Uh, that can be found. Uh, you can draw one of those yourself. I think that's about a 55 degree angle. Or you can also get it out of the book that we sell called A Proper Hand by Jim Daniel. It's the best book that we found that takes uh, the 18th century penmanship and letter writing and combines it all into one convenient uh, location. So tonight, why don't we start with a um, pencil and a ruler. This is just a stick, a ruler that my friend Rudy McKinney makes. And I'm just going to take a chunk of, of um, pewter and draw a few straight lines. And um, I would I would say if we go about a quarter inch apart, if you want to use lined notebook paper, that's completely okay. Uh, that would probably be easier. But I'm trying to create somewhat of a period uh, video, so I thought that would be more of interest to you. So if we start out with a few lines like that, maybe now we can start with the pencil. So what I do is I take the alphabet that I'm trying to to learn and I just prop it up somewhere nearby and and then um, I'll start by trying the the uppercase or the majuscules because to me uh, they're the most beautiful and I enjoy doing those more anyway. As a matter of fact why don't I draw a bigger a bigger set of lines down here just for the ease of us seeing this together first okay in my opinion the first and most important thing to master is uh, what I call the capital stem so you can see underneath the 55 degree slanted line and the capital stem is the building block for the rest of the letter so it goes down and then it loops like that. So I'll just do a couple of these capital stems 
to kind of get started with the pencil like that You may want to start by doing 20 or 30 of those capital stems just to kind of get the hang of it. Not every one of them turns out perfect. But you can see kind of where we're going. Like that there. If we want to throw a B in there, let's do something like that. And it's it's basically the beginning of the letter. So let's say we wanted to do a letter T. So we could do something like this, like that. So that's the capital stem that starts a T. Or it's also productive for a, an F. So that turned out a little bit less than satisfactory or it's also good for a B like this like that so I recommend going through your favorite capital letters like a C or an E and practicing with the pencil first because there's no reason to waste good ink or a good nib on a pen on a quill if you don't really uh, if you don't really know what you're doing and so I make use of a lot of paper and a lot of um, pencil lead when I was practicing this and I think that would be a good idea to start with so the capital stem is the first and most critical thing in my opinion is it starts with that 55 degree angle line down like that and then I just make a curl at the end. So I push down a little bit harder to make it darker and then ease up on the pressure. That's only with a pencil. You certainly don't do that with a quill. But that is called the capital stem, I think, in the copper plate instructional books. So I would just practice the capital stems. to get comfortable to create the larger capital letters later on. So after you create this type of paper, I would just start practicing with the, the round hand. This isn't exactly round hand here. But the more you practice, the better it'll get. And like I said, I'm no genius on this, but I certainly enjoy playing with it at times. Now the lowercase d in period documents usually does something like that. Since my first name is David, I've really enjoyed doing the capital D. So this just gives you an idea of where to start. It's by no means an exhaustive technique video tonight. But this is just uh, hopefully a little inspiration to those who like to get started and don't have a quill or am uh, intimidated by the quill. You can go into the quill later, but I think it's important to get the letter forms down first. Also, I've actually dabbled in copper plate, which is what George Bickham's uh, directory from 1733 uh, spoke about so as you can see with copper plate you can do more flourishes and things um, and to me it, it just lends itself to understanding letter forms a little bit better but that is uh, certainly nothing that we need to start with now but that's just a little inspiration to where it these things can lead 
And I personally don't ever use lined paper under my uh, letter. But um, I'll just end this video with a little hopeful demonstration of how to start with the quill on those same lines. So if we want to do an uppercase C, I do it kind of like that. Do lower cases as well. Lowercase d, which I love. Uppercase d. Uppercase e. Lowercase e. F. Lowercase f. G. These letters are a little bit bigger than I normally do, but I'm just doing it for the sake of the video. Maybe with the next video, we can go into more uh, fundamentals about the quill. That would be enjoyable if that is of interest. We will see. When I'm writing, I generally write pretty quick. So I hope this has been an encouragement to you. If it has, please subscribe. And if you would like, we can continue in doing these type of videos. Um, this is uh, not exhaustive by any means, but it's more to encourage those who have never tried it and are afraid to try it. So please subscribe if you would and like the video. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. And I can address those uh, one at a time. Thank you very much for watching.